Cody Garbrandt, man, you experienced fighting at flyweight, and you had a lot of success. Cody's going down, dropping to flyweight, 125, fighting for the title. You know, what What obstacles do you think he's going to face dropping that extra 10 pounds? That's a terrible weight cut, man. I mean, uh, you know, I feel like uh, just the camps are harder at that weight, you know, the diet. Um, he's going to run into that because, you know, from what I've heard, I'd, Garbrandt doesn't walk around too, too heavy. So he's probably eating about whatever he wants most of camp to make bantamweight. To make flyweight, he's going to have to be on a strict diet. And, you know, that's going to kill not only his injury or his energy, but, you know, the risk of injuries and stuff like that go up. When you're taking in less calories as the output goes out, that's a total game changer. And, uh, you know, that's that's where I'm in a way better world, you know, now I ban him weight. Like, I gained some weight, but it's not that cut. Like, that cut was, you know, taking me to my bare minimum. And that's, you know, that's what he's going to experience. Um, and it's, if he's never done that, that the bounce back is tough. You know, I've been doing that for years and used to be able to bounce back. Um, but um, I'm sure, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I was just saying, you know, he's got the, uh, did you hear the Performance Institute? He's got the UFC no. Performance Institute to help him with the weight cut. You know, so I'm sure it'll be uh, the best he can get. But just the physical feeling of, cutting the weight and bouncing back for the fight uh you know it's gonna be tough do you think it it's a mistake to to fight for the title in your first like cut to 125 should he should he have taken like should should he have done a a couple test runs or at least one test run to drop the weight to see you know like gsp did it you know i mean he's did it in the past he hasn't actually fought at 155 but he did it to to kind of have confidence in himself that he's able to do it Right. Um, I mean, I guess that's a personal thing, man. Like, uh, from, I guess, you know, he may have been down that low, you know, he may have been to 125 in wrestling or something, not, you know, but that's still been years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, we may have played around with it that, you know, and we didn't hear about it type of thing. Um, but you never catch me down on that way unless it was for a fight. So, you know, a test run, a test run like that, uh, He's probably thinking the same thing, you know. Let's just go for it. Uh, it's a ballsy move, but you know we're we're in a sport where sometimes ballsy moves are good. How do you see this fight playing out against Figueredo? Do you see? The... <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Do you see uh, Figueredo like taking advantage early and and or uh, I think that you know I'm just gonna give you my side of it, and I'll see if you agree. I think that they're just going to go in there in the first round and they're just going to be throwing haymakers at each other. And that's what everybody wants to see. And that's what the UFC wants. Right, right. And that's what everybody thinks. And that's where I laugh because we were just talking about the weight cut. I think that's what's going to, like, I, you know, Cardi Garbrandt bounced back, but he got knocked out three times in a row before that. You know, not saying his chin is bad, but the last thing you want to do is suck a lot of water out of your brain the day before you have to get punched and Figueredo hits hard, you know, obviously. And, uh, not that he's not, I mean, Figueredo is making a huge weight cut as well, but you know, once again, he's used to the rehydration process. He's probably got it all down, you know, one little mistake on rehydrating and, you know, you get touched just right. And, you know, just because you didn't rehydrate, right. That's why you're going to sleep. Uh, I think that's going to be his downfall. And I think Figueredo takes it. 